so welcome again we are talking about intracranial hemorrhages and in last video we have discussed about epidural hematoma <coughs> now we are going to discuss about subdural hematoma before moving forward if you like our videos then subscribe to our channel and so that you can get immediate updates now subdural hematoma in contrast to the epidural hematoma it is more of venous blood okay while epidural hematoma was usually due to arterial bleeding now which vein is usually involved it is the middle meningeal vein other veins like bridging veins can also be involved so origin of bleed is venous usually middle meningeal or uh, bridging vein and the blood will now collect below dura so this is dura matter and if you this is the collection site so that's why it is known as subdural hematoma because it is happening beneath the dura matter this uh, will happen across sutures and not across the dural attachment like in epidural hematoma we know that we measure blood pressure and blood pressure is usually uh, normal at the onset in case of uh, subdural hematoma now why it happens it there is no severe trauma which is required very trivial or what we can say minor trauma can lead to subdural hematoma and especially uh, in elderly patients or patient who are alcoholic or patient who are on anticoagulant treatment uh, they are prone th to develop uh, subdural hematoma now and that's why uh, subdural hematoma it is the most common intracranial hemorrhage after head injury because even a minor trauma can cause this now what should be the course uh, while epidural was more of acute this is slightly delayed in onset so usually it can present as acute but it can also have subacute and uh, chronic uh, presentations and there will be slow deterioration uh, with decreased consciousness and hemiparesis but the cortical damage is more compared to uh, epidural hematoma investigation of uh, choice is again non contrast ct and what you can see on that ct scan uh, will depend on at which stage you are seeing it if you are seeing it as less than two week as this picture is then you will see a crescent shape a crescent shape uh, or what we can say that one surface is uh, concave or convex shape uh, hematoma which is very dense hyper dense so at two week this is a hyper dense crescent shape hematoma will be seen and most common site would be usually fronto temporal region 
so this is the most common site for subdural hematoma other sites would be around occipital poles or in uh, middle uh, or inferior middle fossa uh, but uh, as you progress or subacute or chronic presentation then this density would be less here it would be hyperdense here it will be isodense and here it will be hypodense so it depends on at which stage you are seeing the patient now we can do uh, mri also right uh, csf in this case because uh, here uh, it may appear bloody sometimes now subdural hematoma there uh, usually uh, not in medical emergency unless and until the clot size is very big or it starts to cause midline shift if it does then what we have to do we have to uh, put burr holes or drill the holes in the skull or emergency craniotomy has to be done to remove the hematoma so burr hole operation or emergency craniotomy is to be done if it is subdural hemorrhage again coma patients will need uh, intracranial pressure monitoring and yeah obviously the use of anticoagulant has to be avoided